Good evening, everybody. Please be seated. Welcome to our regular meeting of council for Monday, September 18th uh, at 7 p.m. City, City Hall Council Chambers. Make sure I've got all my notes. Um, I'd like to uh, recognize that we are on the traditional territory of the Hupetchuset and uh, Sashat First Nation. Um, any late items, Council? City Clerk, any late items? Then a uh, motion to adopt the agenda as, as circulated. Um, I'll second them. All in favor? Carried. Uh, before we start our regular meeting of council, a couple of items. Uh, first one is, uh, I'd like to welcome back our CAO from his uh, holiday. Nice to see you. Um, and a little bit of uh, historical information for everyone. Um, in recognition of the 50th anniversary of the 1967 amalgamation of the cities of Alberni and Port Alberni, the Alberni Valley Museum, on the recommendation of the Alberni Valley Heritage Commission, has prepared these historical notes. They are for presentation at uh, Port Alberni City Council meetings during September and October in the lead up to the actual amalgamation date of October 28th. These notes offer a snapshot of what was going on 50 years ago as the Twin Cities prepared for amalgamation in 1967. The information comes from 1967 editions of the West Coast Advocate and the Twin Cities Times, as well as other documents from the Albany District Historical Society Community Archives. An ad appeared in the West Coast Advocate on September 21, 1967, announcing a contest to name the new Community Activity Centre. It invited children to submit their suggestions with a $100 prize offered for the winning name. Anybody here remember that contest? I remember that contest. <laughs> but I didn't submit a name. At the September 12th Alberni City Council meeting, it was announced that $7,500 was to be set aside for Amalgamation Week celebrations. Alberni would contribute $2,000 and Port Alberni would contribute the rest. There was some resistance to celebrating the amalgamation. The next day, in a letter to the Twin City Times, John Grieve wrote, now is the time for the taxpayers of each city to demand that this measure, which would add neither self-respect nor pride to either city, be forgotten forever. Be it remembered that when the vote was taken upon the subject of amalgamation, many citizens were not in favor of the measure. In other news from 50 years ago, the Taylor Arm fire, which had been burning since August 16th, was nearly fully extinguished. It had been the driest summer since 1900, with record-setting high temperatures in July and August contributing to the fire. It had been fought with two Martin Mars water bombers, three helicopters, an air tanker from Abbotsford, and ground crews. A heavy rain on September 1st helped it in finally controlling the fire. And other than the city itself, what still exists from 1967? What was it? The Mars water bomber. Absolutely, good for you. Gold star for you. <laughs> okay, there's my lesson for today. Um, council, we have the uh, minutes from the special meeting held at 6 p.m. and the regular council meeting held at 7 p.m. on September 5th. Uh, motion to adopt those minutes. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And that brings us then to public input period, uh, Council. It's an opportunity for the public to address Council on topics of relevance to City Council. A maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each will be accommodated. Anybody wish to address Council? Seeing none, then that moves us on to our delegations. Our first delegation is from Cycle Alberni. Welcome. Thank you very much, 
Uh, and even Mayor. though we know who you are. Yes, if well, you I will introduce, introduce myself, yes. Uh, and I told the folks back home that I would speak up, so I will try to do that. <laughs> okay, and I'll remind you that you have uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm John Maba. I'm the chair of Cycle Alberni, and uh, my colleague Sarah Thomas is uh, one of the driving forces behind the committee. Um, I just want to start out just by, just by mentioning that in the last two years, I've ridden my bike over 9,000 kilometers in the wow. valley. And that, that may seem like a lot, but I've actually talked to other people in the, in the city that have ridden similar amounts. And um, so I think that what we're going to talk about tonight is, is really quite relevant. And uh, it, um, it will start with Sarah. So specifically, we just wanted to do a brief overview, uh, review of the active transportation plan. Because the active transportation plan, which came about in 2014, or was adopted by council rather, in 2014, has significant potential to improve cycling, walking, and wheeling in the community. And since that time, we at Cycle Alberni have really used this document as the driving force for our work and kind of looking at ideas and where we should be going. So it's come to our attention that not everyone is as familiar as we are with this plan. So we just wanted to bring it out and kind of go through it briefly so that people can see um, where we're at. So we've got, we'll discuss a little bit of the successes that we've seen since 2014, some of the gaps that we see as remaining, and then some recommendations and best practices for going forward. So the active transportation plan itself sets out four primary goals. One being to increase walking and cycling trips taken in the city. Two, to have better connected and efficient network. Three, to provide better access to regional trails. And four, to have safer walking and cycling in the city. Out of that, those goal areas were then three targeted action areas. So you can see those below on the screen and they are also across the bottom. So we've got network development and connectivity, the second action area being safety and education, and the third action area being accessibility and design. So we're gonna dive a little deeper into each of those and pull out specifically the cycling related pieces um, and highlight some of the work that's connected to that of what's been going on. So moving on to network development and connectivity. There are three strategy areas that were identified. One being to develop an on-street bicycle network, which we'll dive into a little more, and then also to increase sidewalk connectivity and regional trail connections. So developing an on-street bicycle network, the plan brought forward and proposed a specific grid which laid out some primary and some secondary routes. Um, different types of facilities were included and recommended depending on the size and amount of traffic and whatnot on the road. Some being off-street paths, some cycle tracks, some bike lanes, and some neighborhood bikeways. So some huge successes in this area. Uh, we've seen a tremendous um, work with paint going down on the streets and the bicycle network is rapidly growing with a number of these routes that were proposed in this plan either partially or fully complete at this point. And we also have $100,000 uh, in Bike BC funding confirmed for a Stamp Avenue multi-use pathway which is um, in development stages right now. Um, with that, there are still a number of gaps remaining. Some of the routes uh, are incomplete, and many of them uh, that are complete as secondary route facilities with painted sharrows, whereas the active transportation plan specifically calls for a primary route facilities, such as you know a separated bike path or an off-street bikeway, which makes it easier for more nervous cyclists and especially for children and families. Um, and we've seen statistics show across other communities that when you increase the safety um, of the routes, you do increase the number of people out there as well. So we have six recommendations then under this area, one being to undertake public consultation regarding the existing infrastructure to assess the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for the future developments going forward. Two, to continue adding cycling facilities as funding becomes available. Um, again, in line with the active transportation plan. Three, that all bike routes um, that are designed as primary route facilities in the active transportation plan currently marked as Sharrows be upgraded as, as funding and the opportunity allows. Four, 
um, that as budgeted for in the 2017 capital projects budget around creating a plan for all ages and abilities cycling facilities, that this plan be tied in specifically with the active transportation plan in order to maximize both the benefit of both plans. Um, fifthly, to conduct pilot projects to test these designated cycling um, paths in areas where, you know, maybe makes the most sense. For example, one area where a pilot project could take place might be along Roger Street because that's an area where there's not very much truck traffic and there's a lot of pedestrian activity. Um, through the bike counts, we saw over 200 pedestrians going through the intersection of Roger and 10th um, because you've got the high school, you've got North Island College, you have the recreation facilities in that area. So that could be one area, for instance, perhaps during Bike to Work Week um, would be a good time to pilot such a thing because you could team up um, with Cycle Alberni and other people to do some engagement around that time. And finally, under this, um, Action area, a recommendation to decrease the speed limit in areas where there's bike routes. You can see from the plot on the right-hand side here that the statistics show. So this plot shows up the side um, the cycling fatalities or the fatality or to pedestrian. And across the bottom, you see the speed. So as speed increases, fatalities increase, of course. But the striking thing is that at 50 kilometers an hour, you see that there's an 80% chance of death being struck by a vehicle at moving at that speed, where at 30 kilometers an hour, you are almost 10%. So it's a dramatic increase, which is part of why, you know, 30 kilometers in schools and park zones. So that's a recommendation to consider, um, which would help make bike lanes and bike routes also safer for everyone. So I'll pass it over to John to discuss uh, Action Area 2, Safety and Education. Thanks, Sarah. So we've been partnering with uh, a number of groups in the community, some uh, in organizational aspects such as uh, Echo Centre, Parks and Recreation, and School District 70, uh, especially Wood School. Um, we've also partnered with some of the sponsoring organizations like the Credit Union has been a great help and Aussie Cycle has, has pr provided both um, financial and in-kind support as has, have some of the other bike shops. Um, so there, there have been a number of uh, activities going on in the last couple of years. Uh, the Bike to Work Week obviously is, is the big one that got us started in this area. And along with that, we've done, we've done safety instruction as well as um, just encouraging people to come out and use their bikes more. Uh, we did an adult bike skills course at Parks and Rec and um, there's another one, this week. There's another one. yeah there's another one coming and uh, so you just phone phone parks and rec to uh, investigate that and sign up uh, the, the other big one that I've been really um, quite astounded that we've been able to do is this wheelie fun Alberni uh, wherein Sarah and her her um, colleagues were able to secure a grant uh, I guess provincial grant yeah to purchase um, 36 bikes? 30, 32, 30, 30, yeah. 32 bikes for Wood School so that an entire class can have access to the bikes uh, throughout the week for various activities, for safety lessons, and basically just to, to get them more in the, the mode of using bikes as a, as a form of transportation. And uh, I think that, um, as far as I know, it's the first time in the history of the province that a group has been able to infiltrate the school system and do something like this. So this is this is an amazing, an amazing thing that this uh, this community has going for it, and we're hoping that the program, when it ends in October, it started in April till October, that it will get uh, initial, um, continued funding to to carry on and maybe have it in more schools, more elementary schools in Port Alberni. Um, and then another, um, another thing that is on the horizon right now and should be available within the next week or two is the cycling map. And this is, this is a great um, resource for the community. It's going to be available all over town at the Chamber of Commerce. We've ordered 10,000 copies. 
so that not only residents, but people who come into town will be able to look at this and say, oh, there's all the cycling routes in Port Alberni, and there's hiking routes, you know, and there's bus routes and everything. And um, our sponsors, have all, they're all going to have their logos on there, so they're going to get lots of advertising, and uh, it's going to be a great thing. We're not the first to do it, obviously. I, I've seen the ones in Vancouver, but it's, um, it's going to be a great resource for us. Um, We've, we've also got the uh, active transportation website, which is in, in conjunction with the city's website. Now, some of the gaps. Um, obviously, we need, we need secure funding to move ahead. Um, I've got this, um, this metaphor about cycling. It's like going for a walk in the jungle. The jungle. If the lions and tigers and bears don't get you, then, then maybe the snakes and other ones will. And when you're riding... If the potholes and the logging trucks and the open doors and the unsuspecting drivers who are backing up in front of you don't get you. So, I mean, it's really a dangerous game out there. And, you know, we, we kind of take these things for granted. But I think we owe it to our community and especially to our young people to be training them how to, how to cycle safely. Um, uh, I, another thing is um, the issue of bike theft. We're going to be working with the RCMP. So that's another uh, thing that we have to we have to come up with some answers for. Uh, there's, a, there's a website called bikemaps.ca. Yeah, and um, you can... Yeah, okay. And you can register on there any hazardous places in the community so that they, you know, like maybe you're the only one that, that has found this and, and you want to put it on and then it'll come to our attention and we can, we can address problems. Um, where are we here? Don't surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And and then there's w the whole issue of walking and and uh, scooter education, which um, is a, is a whole another ball of wax that we haven't been able to get into much yet. Um, so let's see. So the, our recommendations are to continue to support and work along with us uh, and other other interested groups to promote active transportation. Um, We'll, we'll need, in a few years, we'll pro hopefully need to update the, the cycling map with all the new bike, bike lanes and trails we're going to have. Um, and also to, uh, to work with the RCMP on the stolen bike registry. So uh, with that, uh, we'd like to remind you about the Bike Jamboree, which is coming up next Sunday. It's from noon until, well, 3, 2 to 3, uh, depending on, you know, how energetic everyone is with their... With their um, uh, dancing and there's going to be live music and food and games for the kids. Now and, we'll just do this part. Yep, go ahead. Thanks, John. <laughs> just to move us along, sorry, the, uh, we get excited when we get into, you know, specifically the education and events. We get, yeah, pretty gung-ho, so definitely come out on Sunday. Just finally, the third section of the Active Transportation Plan, or the third action area, rather, is accessibility and design. So three strategy areas there were pedestrian accessibility, bicycle parking, and wayfinding and signage. So just honing in a little bit on the bike parking, huge success there. Again, thanks to the partnership with the City of Port Alberni and the Young Pro Professionals of the Alberni Valley. Um, got a uh, number of new bike racks installed across the city. Also, um, the city moved forward with bylaw number 4856 in 2014. Now new commercial and multifamily residences require bike parking so that section of the plan is like yeah triple stars um, then with regards to wayfinding and signage we see some gaps um, their cycling routes need to be better identified with signage and road markings trails are inconsistently signed and there's not really a wayfinding to lead people from the street to the trails or from the trails back to the street is also tricky if people don't necessarily know the area too well so that's a recommendation for further action you can see there there's an example of what's used in Vancouver. So you've got the street signs on the poles connecting to what's on the street you know, sign itself, as well as then when you arrive at the trailhead. So all of this, we have a much more detailed presentation which we're willing to go into at some point if, um, if there's any interest. Um, but just then on some final recommendations to continue active transportation data collection so the bike counts have been going the past two years, and that's an important thing to continue benchmarking. To take ownership over funding and active transportation initiatives. We would also love to see the city specifically adopt targets around um, cycling and active transportation mode share. Um, and with that, 
Uh, we say thank you, congratulations on so much work being done, and we look forward to the next phases of implementation. So thanks from us. Okay, Sarah and John, thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of questions, though. Mm -hmm. um, did it seem to me like there were more cyclists this summer than in previous summers? Is that We would accurate? agree. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the, the bike racks look great. Thank you very much for doing that. They're very uh, professional looking, and uh, I think they really add to the community. Um, where is the bike jamboree? Blair Park. Blair Park. Okay. Oh, I see it right there. Okay, thank you. And um, my last question is, does the... Does the school district realize that it's being infiltrated? <laughs> okay. Uh, Council, any other questions? Councillor Minions. Thank you. Um, just a quick one. I think there's some confusion around the Sharrows. Um, so I, I think, oh, actually, maybe that's something that the city could work on advertising as well um, with utility bills or something like that. But um, I think that's an opportunity because Absolutely. people, um, Councillor Alamedi told me that people thought they're actual bike lanes mm. and that that's where the bikes get to go and now there's not enough room for cars. Um, so definitely some confusion and an opportunity and to educate. Yeah, so just to touch on that, that is where the bikes are supposed to go. Um, but knowing that the Sharrows are in places where the there's not enough road allowance or it was deemed there was not enough road allowance to accommodate a full bike lane plus the driving lane or you know, without changing the road in some way. So the initial way that the city worked with the bike lanes was to not change traffic flow at all and to not impact parking at all. There is tremendous opportunity if we were to tweak a few things and not lose a lot of parking to actually put full on bike lanes in some of these areas. But for now, Sharrows are an opportunity to say, hey cyclists, hey drivers, everyone sharing the road together. Cyclists are here, drivers are here. Um, let's make sure to share the road together. We did, it's a good plug for it, in conjunction with Willie Van Alberni and with Shaw TV, put together a series of eight, eight, I think, um, bike safety and bike education videos, which are being rolled out. Four of them are available online now, and the others are coming. One of them specifically speaks about the bike lanes and the Sherrill, so I would encourage everyone to find those online. You can find Cycle Alberni on Facebook, or else the Shaw TV YouTube. Thanks. Okay, anything else, Council? Councillor Alamani. Uh, I just want to thank you for the presentation. Um, I do think, I think it's really exciting, and I do think I saw a lot more people on bikes in the past month, um, so that's really encouraging. Um, I also saw yesterday um, on our new BC Transit buses that just were delivered um, a, number, a number of bikes being transported around by BC Transit, which is even better because that means people are getting to where know there probably isn't bike facilities coming into the city so that's that's really important too so um, I just commend you for your work and uh, you know onward and upward thanks very much <laughs> okay John and Sarah thank you very much and I'll just I'll just pass these around this is this very unique program that Wood School has adopted and school districts have okay thank you thanks, okay counselor thank you our next delegation is uh, from the Twinning Society. I like the shirts. Oh, thank you. Uh, they were designed by Gel Design, Steve. Yes. Uh, they were extremely helpful. Uh, good evening, Mayor Rattan and City Council. Um, my name is Sherry McKinnon, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm the president of the Port Alberni International Twinning Society. And it's a great pleasure for me to be here tonight with the members of the adult delegation that went to Abashiri with me in July of this year. Um, the City of Port Alberni, the district, school district 70 community members have worked very hard and successfully to support our cultural and educational exchanges for our students in School District 70 for the last 32, 31 years. We are here to share some of the benefits of our sister city relationship, as well as to present mayor and count, the mayor and council with some gifts from Al-Bashiri. First of all, we would like to share with you that Al-Bashiri Al visits provide some economic benefits to the Valley as the visitors spend money on hotels and restaurants and also make various purchases at local establishments. Also, many of Al-Bashiri citizens return to the Valley 
and uh, come as tourists. We feel that these exchanges are a vehicle to promote Port Alberni um, as a tourist destination. And I'd now like to turn our presentation over to our Vice President, Lori Morfitt, who will discuss the benefits of our educational and cultural exchanges. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Good evening. I've been involved uh, in twinning for about 20 years, and I've planned and led three student delegations, and I've also you know, I've been in charge of providing homestays for the students from Abashiri that come and stay here and organize the itineraries and placement with schools. Um, it was very different to go in July without kids. It was great fun <laughs> in a different way, <laughs> but we did miss the kids. I've often been asked what twinning's all about and what our students and families get out of going to Abashiri or what our families in Port Alberni get from hosting students from Abashiri. So I prepared some slides um, which will provide you with a visual explanation. So this slide is um, this one of our beautiful Mount um, Aerosmith has been taken by Dave Grant and it was made into a plaque uh, to celebrate 30 years of celebra celebrating twinning. So in uh, 2014, we had a delegation of mostly high school students, uh, my husband and I. I had to keep bringing him along because I couldn't keep going. Um, and then you'll notice Marilyn. She has been hosting um, homestays, students and teachers for many years, and she was waiting for an adult-only delegation. So she was the grandma of the trip, and she joined and was a, a great addition. You can see we just arrived. The students are a little bit excited and scared. Nobody knew each other at that point. But um, our students, when they get to Abishiri, they get to live with a homestay family for five nights, and they get to go to school. And school is very different in Japan. The high school students are wearing uniforms. Um, the students get to serve and eat lunch in the classrooms with the teachers, and they get to do all the cleaning up, and they're just so... They've got a system for recycling down. A little grade one boy was telling me how to recycle. I couldn't unfold something, and he took it out of my hand and showed me. Uh, the students also clean the bathrooms and halls daily and they do hire somebody to do some of the heavy cleaning a couple of times a year. So I don't think CUPE would like that in our school system. <laughs> but we saw not one piece of garbage anywhere and there was not graffiti anywhere to be found. There's also after school clubs at the high school that teachers are, uh, they run, by, it's, it's mandatory and they don't leave until six or seven most nights. Uh, some of the cl after school clubs were karate, um, baseball, uh, uh, there was tea ceremonies. It was just a huge, huge array of, of courses that you could take and become a specialty um, at. So I will go along here. Some of our girls got to, in, in Abishiri there's all kinds of hot springs and so they got to soak their feet in, in hot springs. Very different cultural and geographic experiences by being there. And even though language is difficult to communicate at times, their English is better than our Japanese and you learn a lot by charades and Google Translate. <laughs> so. You can see that families began to grow between Abashiri. Um, one of these little brothers came to uh, last January, and so Ethan, the fellow with the blue shirt, that you can see whether one didn't wear the one he was supposed to wear. That was part of the, the trip. <laughs> but relationships grew, and those big guys were in tears when we left. This is a picture of our kids and the Abashiri kids that visited us last January on an SD70 bus, which was quite an experience for them. I guess our busing is different than theirs. Mm -hmm. So when the kids are at school, um, the adult delegation from Abashiri, they get to come and visit City Hall and visit the sites of Port Alberni as well as schools. So Tim, did you know that you talked to Mr. Masada, that was the summer before, and he was so impressed with the recycling and all that you had uh, shared with him that he went, there's Mr. Masada in the blue shirt, he went home and he decorated his recycling, a new recycling truck, promoting twinning and Port Alberni. So we get off the plane in July and it gets beautiful and Dave Grant has something to present you. It's a little surprise so I won't, I won't ruin that. And I want you to know by having that sign at, um, at the Chamber of Commerce, Abashiri 
the people of Abushiri were so excited because it's been difficult as money's become tighter all around in our community and with the city involvement at both ends. They took this as a real sign and commitment that uh, the city of Port Alberni is wanting and willing to continue supporting as is our community. So in Abashiri, we, there is a Port Alberni fan club. <laughs> and you can see by the sign, so they plant, you can see the, the maple leaf. They plant it yearly and they hand water it. One guy rides his bike and he hand waters it um, every day and they are our biggest supporters. They also make and sell cookies and pancakes um, served with maple syrup and they raise money to support future trips at their end. So that was our July delegation there. So Port Alberni Fan Club members, there they are preparing to, to make money for more students. And this is this July. Thank you very much to the city and councillors. Uh, that was a wonderful gift that you gave. Sherry was able to give it to Mayor Mizutani. Very much appreciated. And nice and small to fit in a suitcase. <laughs> And then Dave Grant received a city a gift from the city of Abashiri, and he'll be presenting that shortly. Now, this doesn't show up really well, but this signifies everything uh, that Twinning's about. We got to join an elementary school, and they played this amazing train game. You don't need communication. Um, you can just have fun together, and we may live across the world from each other, but Port Alberni and Abashiri are family. And we've taken over two and three generations of kids now. And we hope to be able to continue. And we are currently looking for teacher leaders and SD70 students to travel to Abashiri. It could be this July or next. And we have an AGM this Thursday at 7 uh, in the Alberni Elementary School Library. We are a small, passionate group, but we're too small. We need new blood and we need more hands. So please spread the word and I will pass it over to Dave. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Mayor of Tam, councillors, good evening, nice to see you. Uh, Mary made a comment about the logo on her shirts. Uh, when I went to Japan in 1986 with the first delegation of students, of which there were 66 students, we all wore red coats and this was the logo that we had on the back of our coats. I've been involved with twinning for 31 years and enjoyed every moment of it. So on behalf of uh, Mayor Misitani and the city of Abashiri, I would like to present this gift to you and to convey their thank you for the salmon sculpture which our delegation presented to the mayor celebrating our 31 years of friendship and our sister city relationships. So Mayor, could you please come forward and get this? Did you uh, want to open it now or wait till after? It's up to you. <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can use it for your publicity. <laughs> yeah. The mayor can bear his thanks for, uh, for the gift that you sent him. Uh, I had the honor of having coming out to our house for a barbecue two summers ago, and I took all the delegation out in tubes. 
And one of the gentlemen decided that he didn't need to take his glasses off or take his shoes off or anything. And I got him very, very wet. Lori mentioned the, uh, the recycling van for Mr. Masada. This is a copy of the van here. This is exactly what you saw in that picture. It's, he's a recycling business. He was so enthused about visiting Port Alberni, he wanted to advertise and promote it locally within Abishiri in the city. And when you take a look at it, you will see images of Port Alberni that they feel are very, very important to them. And of course, on the front is the Canadian flag. And may you enjoy looking at it. Can I just pass it around? Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'd just like to say one last thing. We do have a Facebook page, um, so please, uh, I can forward the, the link to you so you can take a look. Some of you are already members of that page, but please take a look. And uh, the Port Alberni Fan Club also has a very active Facebook page, so I, I will send the, the link through our Councillor Sauvey. And again, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Councillor Sauvey for his continued support, as well as Mayor and Council. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for, uh, for representing Port Alberni so well for these 31 years. And thank you for going to Japan, uh, representing our city. Um, by extension, everybody in the, in the city gains from your experience. So once again, thank you so much. Um, Councillor Paulson. Just, uh, my, um, my association with the Twinning Society is several years ago, and uh, there's a family from Japan, the Yamashitas, the Yamashitas, that we were. Once you have those friends, you have them for life. And we, we still exchange Christmas gifts, and it's special. It is very special. Yeah. And our, our presentation, it was only meant to be 10 minutes, so we had to equip various yeah. things. But I just wanted to say that your support with the Bulldogs, I believe yep. that was 2009, was that word? Um, that was incredible. And they still talk about They brought their hockey team over. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And uh, when Lisa and I, well, when all of us got off the plane, that coach greeted us with the Bulldogs flag oh, cool. in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so it's continuing. Any time. If they, if, they want to get on the, if they want to get on the ice with the Bulldogs, we can arrange that. Yeah. Okay, and Councillor uh, Sobe, thank you for representing us. It's uh, important that we keep that liaison. As long as my red surge fits. <laughs> okay, Council, our next delegation is uh, from the Albany Valley Gaming Association. And this is Joan Hall. Good evening. Thank you for having me here um, on behalf of the Alberni Valley Gaming Association. And um, I'm here to tell you that this is our 10th anniversary celebration of AVGA and Chances Rimrock. I don't know how many of you have been there. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some have? Many Too many well, times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm um, going to invite you, and I hope that you all will come this week to join us in the celebration. My, my reason for being here really is to let you know that the Alberni Valley Gaming Association, which is a nonprofit society, owns and is responsible for the operation of Chances Rimrock. We are actually a charity member. Charity members actually own that facility. We have contracted with the, manage, the management of that 25,000 square foot building and the operation to um, the Colson group of companies. So they manage it for us, but we own it. Members of the AVGA represent not-for-profit organizations that do a variety of things. They enhance our public safety. They provide stewardship for the beautiful environment that we live in. And they provide a lot of programs and enrichment for people in the Alberni Valley in the areas of human and social services, sports, arts, and culture. So that's what we do. And I wonder if you knew that in the past 10 years, the City of Port Alberni has received just under $4 million because you're the municipality that hosts this facility. And I believe you have an attachment that explains how that money is used by this city. 
If you don't, we can provide it later. In 2016, the AVGA paid over $84,000 in property taxes. And of course, we know that is not going to likely decrease in the future. So we are tax property owners, or no, property, I guess we're property owners, aren't we? We employ 55 full and part-time employees, so we're a fairly substantial employer in the town. <coughs> and they and their families make this a very vibrant community. If you have not visited our facility, we really ask you to come and see it. It is beautiful. It's a lovely place to be. Uh, September's a good time to come and kick off our next decade, we hope, of success. The staff and the management have planned some exciting things on the gaming floor for those people who game and like and enjoy that and of course you can always go to our wonderful cypress restaurant and lounge to enjoy a really delicious meal so we hope that we will see you on thursday night some of you we've sent the invitations to come and help us celebrate this and um, we hope you'll be with us in the next 10 years thank you very much Okay, thank you. And uh, certainly I know you'll see some of us there. I know I'm intending on being there. So thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, thank you everyone. And Council, that, uh, that ends our, our delegations. Um, we have, uh, thank you everyone for, uh, for attending. Well, there's more to the meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, Council, I don't believe there's any unfinished business. And which then brings us to, to staff reports. The... The first staff report is uh, is on accounts, and Councillor Washington, would you uh, like to make that motion? Certainly, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I move the certification of the Director of Finance dated September 18, 2017 be received, and checks numbering 139676 to 139761 inclusive, and payments of accounts totaling $584,527.17 be approved. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any Clarification, all those in favor, carried. And from City Clerk, we have a, a Curling Club grant funding application. Uh, we, we have a report dated uh, September 14th from the City Clerk requesting consideration of a re resolution acknowledging the Alberni Valley Curling Club ownership of, uh, of its ice plant machinery required to support the, their grant funding application. Uh, just to clarify, Council, this is uh, critical that we we make this resolution in order that they would be eligible for the grant. And uh, Councillor Paulson, I'm wondering if you're willing to uh, make that motion. Sure. That the report from the City Clerk dated September 14th, 2017 be received. And Council for the City of Port Alberni authorized staff to provide a letter of agreement to the Alberni Valley Curling Club acknowledging that notwithstanding the terms of the lease agreement, the City of Port Alberni does not intend to exercise its option to acquire any ownership of the ice plant machinery, including any upgrades or replacement of such machinery that may be undertaken. Mayor Seconder? I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried, thank you. And the council, that brings us then to the uh, current status report. Um, any questions, council, on this status report? Any clarification? Uh, Councillor McClellan. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Oops. Um, uh, I noticed the number one that we're going to get a report on October the 10th. or something I'm interested in, but so I'll wait till then. But number two, uh, uh, tripartite agreement uh, to looking after Alberni Museum and the last budget. That was something that we talked about, and I haven't heard any upgrades on where we are with forming a society or whatever to run the museum. Good question, Con uh, CAO. Mr. Mayor, on the topic of a tripartite uh, agreement uh, for the museum, uh, we, as you know, we have a new director of Parks, Rec, and Heritage, and um, 
She's been on the job a couple of weeks now, and this is a task that I'll be looking to Willa Thorpe to, to lead for us on. But um, at this point, she's new in the job, and, and I, we can't expect her to be engaging on this topic at this point. It is on her, our agenda, and we'll be pursuing it, but in a timely manner. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Council? All right, then, Councillor Minions, do you want to move receipt of that? Right? Move receipt of the status report. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And manager's monthly reports from Parks, Recreation, and Heritage. And here's Director Thorpe. Welcome. Thank you. So you've got my uh, monthly report in front of you there. A few items that I just wanted to touch on before I reach out to Council for any questions. Um, first of all, staff have done a tremendous job with the annual Aquatic Centre shutdown. Of course, we're 50 years young at the facility and, and I've found that I've had the opportunity to tour many facilities around Canada and it uh, is nothing short of amazing to see the, uh, the wonderful condition the facility is in. Uh, considering its age. Uh, there's many facilities that I've toured that are far younger than ours that uh, are definitely not in the, the type of condition that uh, we find uh, there at the Echo Centre. So things are looking very, very good there. Uh, secondly, I'm very pleased to see the progress that's been made with the Recreation Park revitalization. Councillor Paulson mentioned at the last meeting, uh, to encouraged everyone to go and uh, to check out the facilities. It's really coming along nicely. Um, Thirdly, the uh, staff team is working on the 50th amalgamation celebration that will be taking uh, place later this fall. So I'm looking forward to coming back to Council to uh, provide an update on that at a future Council meeting. And lastly, I'd like to put a bit of a challenge out to Council that with the implementation of our PlexFit walking program at the Multiplex, uh, I'd love to see Council's participation. There's a, a variety of walking uh, routes throughout the, uh, throughout the multiplex there, so I'd love to see maybe a little friendly competition among uh, Mayor and Council to see folks getting out and active, especially as the weather starts to, to turn a little bit as we head into the fall, uh, that another opportunity for our community to, to get active and engaged right in the multiplex. So there's uh, a variety of trails that have been outlined throughout the multiplex, so I encourage you to... Uh, to come out and enjoy, and I'd like to extend to, uh, for any questions that Council might have regarding the report. And Councillor Paulson? Just uh, <clears throat> going back to the uh, pool shutdown, um, in general terms, what kind of shape was the tank in itself? Um, as you know, we've experienced problems with it over the last few years and leaking and not being able to find the darn leaks and uh, <laughs> those sorts of things, but um, what, what was their findings? Yeah, I, it's of course it's a challenge. Yeah. Anytime you're looking at a 50-year-old mm -hmm. basin, um, it's obviously quite a corrosive environment. Being a, the humidity, of course, being uh, being a, a water-based facility, um, every year, of course, it uh, we look at further deterioration. Um, when you, however, at sort of the naked eye, when you go in there today, it looks wonderful. The staff have really done a tremendous job. Um, but yes, of course, every year there's. There's additional expense, and there's a you know putting another patch. Yeah, always yes, <laughs> but uh, but no, actually it looks uh, looks fantastic. And when you see when you start to actually fill the pool, and you see what the sort of condition, uh, you can really tell the condition of the the plumbing when you of course start to to fill the pool with the inlet inlet jets, and to see how how quickly we are able to balance and heat uh, that space is a is a good indicator that the plumbing is in in great Working. shape. Yeah, so it's looking quite good. We never said the two Bulldog games on the weekend, and the, the number one question, not who was number nine on the ice, but what are those colored dots on the floor in the multiplex? So now so everyone knows. That, well, I hope so. That, so. <laughs> uh, and hopefully <laughs> Councillor Paulson can, uh, can lead the charge, that the, those little dots that are out there are that, uh, the Plex Fit uh, walking routes. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, Director Thorpe, uh, thank you for bringing up the uh, the information about uh, that you're working on our 50th uh, anniversary celebrations because, of course, that's coming up quite quickly, uh, just slightly over a month now. Uh, so the sooner you can get us that information, the better, and the sooner we can get it out to the community, the better, because people will be 
anxious to participate. Absolutely, and as a liaison, I understand with uh, with Mayor and Council, Councillor Paulson will be will be joining us on that committee as well. So we'll ensure, in short order, uh, the entire council's brought up to speed. Great, thank you, uh, Councillor Alamani. Thanks. Um, it was a really great report. Uh, I wanted to point out because um, I've been driving by it almost daily lately. Uh, the uh, Millstone Park mm -hmm. facility is fantastic. Thank it you. looks really, really nice. Um, I've been getting comments about it all summer long, so uh, so that's been really nice to see. Um, and I was really happy to see in the report the, the mentions of the, the grandstands at Rec Park. Um, do you have any, any indication of kind of when that kind of work might start? Because now that it's kind of getting towards... The yucky part of the year, maybe maybe that mm -hmm. might not happen till spring. But yeah, I've got to. I'll have to double check and look into it and distribute to council cool. some more specific timelines. That's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you for all the work. Okay, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I noticed in the report under co-op community spaces the partnership that you made with the Kiwanis Club about the play box at Canal Waterfront Park. I'm just wondering if you had any feedback on it. To, is it being accepted? Is it being used? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, thank you. Yes, it, it's definitely being used. And it's always encouraging to see when you're, you're never quite sure exactly how, how initiatives will take when you, when you implement them. You've got great ideas, but you never really know until, until you see community playing in those space. And, uh, and I'm very pleased to report that it has been very, very well used. And so, yeah. Okay. Councillor McClellan. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, just a couple of questions. One, I know it's a hard one. Um, how, how, how long do you think we've got for that pool before we need a new one? We're talking about an aquatic center. We're not talking too serious yet, but we're looking at different ways of financing it. And you come and say everything's wonderful. Do we just stop trying that? You mean stop trying to say it's wonderful or stop no, working stop so hard? No, stop trying to get, get a... <laughs> Yeah. So to answer your question, yes, it's very difficult to say uh, to say the useful life. I'd like to think in 50 years from now, uh, we won't be in the in the same space. Um, the, it's a it's a tricky one when you start to look at tasking staff with saying, you know what, if we just forego all the hard work and the blood, sweat, and tears all the time, that maybe that'll speed up the process to replace a facility. It's pretty tough to. Uh, I think it's a, a difficult sell to. I don't think it does the community justice, and I also think with the the staff's hard work to tell them to sort of shelve their pride and say don't don't work so hard at doing such a great job. I think is is a disservice to community. So we we of course have started the started the process uh, on our end to look at exploring replacement and we're fortunate that we're in a situation where we're still ahead of the curve and we're not coming coming to you saying that this is the last year and we better do something awful quick so I think we're uh, our timing is good to start the conversation like you say we're we're not in complete dire straits but it is of course every year it's it's more of a push for sure and you mentioned uh, heating the pool when you're filling up. Is, is the temperature of the pool going up? We had, used to get a lot of complaints from people there and coming out freezing. Yep, it's it's interesting to say that in in every aquatic facility I've worked in, it's the same sort of feedback that folks we we get very consistent and we've got uh, all of our systems being computerized so we know exactly what the temperature is uh, of of the facility and that doesn't change. It's uh, it's the folks coming in and exiting will say, oh man, it's it's quite a bit warmer today than it was yesterday, and the next day they're quite a bit cooler uh, than they were previously, and and. Uh, the reality is it's the individual, not the space, interestingly enough. Okay, anything else, Council? Well, Director Thorpe, thank you very much for your report. Councillor Alamani said it was an excellent report. Thank uh, you. We enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Council, that brings us to our uh, next item, which is bylaws. And... Uh, Bylaws are required for the adoption of regulations, financial plans, changes to land use policy, and to approve borrowing. So a bylaw requires four separate resolutions to be adopted and must be considered over a minimum of two council meetings. Each reading enables council to reflect on the bylaw before proceeding further. So this bylaw is from the Director of Finance, a five-year financial plan, 2017 to 2021, amendment number two, bylaw number 4949. Uh, we have a report uh, dated September 6th from the Director of Finance providing a draft amendment. Um, 
to the uh, 2017 to 2021 uh, financial plan to reflect more accurate budget projections for operation and capital. So uh, uh, Director Rothwell is here and um, I'm wondering if she could just walk us through some of that, please. Welcome, Director Rothwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council. Um, in the um, discussion, I've mentioned that, <clears throat> excuse me, it's common to other municipalities. When you look at your year to dates partway through the year, and you may have to adjust them because of subsequent events, um, grant funding, um, successful grant funding applications, that kind of thing. So you kind of massage the five-year plan to, to be a little closer to what's really happening. So there were some fairly significant uh, changes where some rural dividend grant funding came in for $300,000 in economic development. So that revenue went up, <clears throat> but his expenses did too. He needs to spend it all this year, I believe. Um, there were a couple of things, some housekeeping. Um, BC Hydro utility tax was sitting in the wrong account for years and years and years. So I just you know, <clears throat> changed that one. Our small community investment and traffic revenue sharing grants were quite a bit less than what they had told us we were going to get. They'll give us a three-year projection and then sometimes it doesn't materialize. So that was an adjustment. Uh, there was an error in one of the departmental budgets that I didn't discover until I was out of balance with something else. Um, and okay, there's a small transfer from Earth to make up the difference with the hybrid replacement we're planning to do for number 720, the Ford, Ford van. The quotes were coming in a little bit higher. And uh, there was a sewer capital project <clears throat> and general capital for Butte Street. Um, I think it was at the last council meeting. Council approved some transfer of funding and stopping one project in favor of the Butte Street one. So there was some accounting to do around that. And then this is all covered with <clears throat> the transfer some, <clears throat> excuse me, from surplus, which makes uh, there's no financial impact on the general operating expense. It nets to zero. And I hope that made sense. Just do have a couple of questions, but let's yeah. uh, Councillor Paulson and then Councillor McClellan. This is um, on the transfer from Earth with regards to the four van number seven twenty. Mm -hmm. Just maybe um, refresh my memory. It, it's a million dollar vehicle. Just what what is the vehicle? No, that um, this is the replacement of the small van, the city van. And it came in at about thirty-two five instead of thirty-two thousand. I think I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was a, a shortage of about twenty-five hundred dollars, and Earth can certainly absorb that. Oh, okay. So that's the total Earth fund. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the total amounts show in there because, like, the individual. Um, if I put the individual pieces in, it would go on forever. Okay. So sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. It were, van yeah, we're. Yeah, we were we were planning on spending nine sixty four five, and we need to spend nine sixty seven. Yeah. So. Thanks, Gary. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Councillor McClellan. Same million dollar van, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, but I, I will point out for everybody's uh, information that uh, on the uh, in the parking lot here beside City Hall uh, on our what we call the Columbus Tree. There actually is a, an electric charger there now. That's for right. For that van that's coming. So uh, I was thinking we should put the picture of that charger on our city website to let everybody know that, hey, here we go. We're joining this 2017. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry? Um, at this point, we are. It's coming out of your council allowance. And uh, <laughs> Councillor Alleman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm not sure that this is actually a, a question for, for, for the director, but um, I'm just wondering the, the, only, the only amount here that I, I kind of don't have a, a, a brain on is the, the rural div dividend grant, um, the 300000 
um, have we do we know where that's going or what that's doing I don't think yes that was some um, for the biomass cluster project that um, Pat Deacon had um, put together a project and he got the three hundred thousand dollars in the um, grant funding to um, I don't know a lot of the details but there are several companies that are getting together and um, sort of wood based industry and then you would contract out the three hundred thousand dollars in expenses so it was like revenue coming in, but he, it generated a $300,000 expense as well. Maybe we could get, oh, sure. Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, please. Our economic <laughs> development manager, Mr. Deacon, has um, in a previous meeting stated that he would come back to council and give you a summary of, um, of that project. But for, for this report and this purposes, this is an, an in and an out of, of a grant. Um, so from a financial perspective, it's, it's a balance of uh, a mm -hmm. grant and an expenditure. Yeah, I'm more. I'm more kind of wondering on that. Yeah, on that. And, and Mr. Deacon detailed. is the one to update you on that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Anything else, Council? All right. Then, this is the uh, in and out is right above my million dollar van, so <laughs> <laughs> you can figure it out from there. I even worked that one out. <laughs> okay. Hey, now uh, uh, we need to begin the. Thank you very much, Director Rothwell. Uh, we need to. Uh, move the receipt of the report and uh, read the bylaws. So, uh, Councillor Sobey, do you want to begin that process? Thank you. That the report from the Director of Finance dated September 6, 2017 be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. That the five year financial plan 2017 to 2021 amendment number two, bylaw number 4949, be now introduced and read for the first time. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carry. That the five year financial plan 2017 to 2021 amendment number two by law number 4949 be read a second time. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. That the five year financial plan 2017 to 2021 amendment number two by law number 4949 be read a third time. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, Council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, before we move on any further, Councillor Solvay has reminded me that um, Council didn't actually pass a resolution to receive the um, Parks, Recreation and Heritage Report. Uh, thank you. Uh, so to go back to that, uh, Council, uh, Councillor Paulson, do you want to move receipt of that report? That the monthly report from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage providing information about current Departmental operations be received. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And, Council, that brings us to uh, correspondence for action. Uh, first item, in fact, the only item is the uh, Hupetchus at First Nation, Clutacy Marina. Uh, they have, uh, we have a letter confirming their withdrawal uh, from that uh, Marina RFP process. Um, and Councillor Alamani, do you want to move receipt of that letter? That the letter dated August 29, 2017, confirming their withdrawal from the Clutacy Haven Marina RFP process be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, I do have a question for the CAO, uh, but Councillor McClemon, you may want to I was just going to ask the question, where are we now? So essentially my question, okay, so let's uh, answer that particular question um, and I think I can probably answer that as well as the CAO um, which is uh, where we'll look at the whole process and in discussion with the uh, with the Port Authority decide what we're what we think our next step is going to be there hasn't been any final decision made but I do have a question I'm sorry to put you in the hot seat CAO but um, yeah um, where does this uh, place the uh, the PILT payment? Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, as you're um, alluding to, the city has a, an accord agreement with the Port Authority um, that involves the Port Authority paying the city an annual fee in lieu of taxes, if you like. Um, and uh, we have a five-year agreement to do with this proposal that is now off the table that would see five years of that um, accord payment 
be uh, committed to that project. Almost $100,000 per year, so almost half a million dollars over five years. Um, I believe we're two years into that accord, so I, I, um, if council um, receives this letter um, and we move forward, I expect Director Rothwell will we, we'll be reaching out to the Port Authority asking them to um, submit to us the two years um, of, of payments because they've been holding them pending this project. And we'll just begin to receive that as revenue, in general revenue, until council directs otherwise. Okay. Unless they direct otherwise. Perfect. Thank okay. you. I'd hate to see us lose that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, council, <coughs> that brings us then to uh, proclamations. Uh, the first one is from the Recycling Council of British Columbia. Uh, we have an email dated uh, September 6th uh, requesting a proclamation. Uh, Councillor uh, McLemon, would you like to make that, that uh, motion? Mr. Mayor, I would move that the email dated September 6, 2017 from the Recycling Council of British Columbia requesting that over October 16 to 22, 2017 be proclaimed as Waste Reduction Week in Port Alberni and be received in the week proclaimed as requested. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And Councillor Minions, do you want to do the one from the... That the email dated September 8th, 2017 from the Canadian Institute of Public Health Inspectors requesting that September 25th to 29th, 2017 be proclaimed as Environmental Public Health Week in Port Alberni be received and the week proclaimed as requested. Seconder? Second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favour? Carried. And uh, Councillor Sobe, do you want to make the next motion on, from the Council of Senior Citizens Organizations of BC? That the letter dated September 4, 2017 from the Council of Senior Citizens Organizations of BC requesting that October 1, 2017 be proclaimed as the International Day of Older Persons 2017 in Port Alberni be received and the day proclaimed as requested. Your seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And what, did, what do older persons get for oh. this week? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you got a hard job getting into this club. No, what do I get? I think, I think, uh, Councillor McClemon, we should keep this as, as an exclusive a club as we possibly can for as long as we can. They just thought they were going to grow older, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I intend to live for a long time, so therefore you've got a long time to wait, Councillor uh, Alamani. <clears throat> okay. Uh, informational correspondence, um, City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A few items uh, from the Port Alberni Association for Community Living, uh, an invitation to their 60th anniversary gala on September 30th um, at Echo Centre, a letter from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Green Communities Committee, acknowledging the city in achieving climate action goals by reducing greenhouse gas emissions in 2016, the city has been awarded level three recognition, accelerating progress on charter commitments. From the BC Municipal Climate Leadership Council, an invitation uh, to the Climate Leadership Institute Conference November 1st to 3rd in Richmond. There is an early registration fee of $245. Um, a copy of a letter from the city to the regional district requesting that the regional district take a leadership role in the exploration of a new aquatic centre and provision of aquatic services in our region. That letter has been forwarded to um, the Alberni Valley Committee and uh, their meeting is tomorrow. And lastly, an email from the Minister of Municipal Affairs uh, introducing herself uh, as the new minister and looking to connect prior to or during the upcoming UBCM conference. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, councillors, anybody wish to pull anything out of that? Councillor Alamani? Um, just on the, the climate leadership, I want to I want to thank the city because the city has done a lot of work even before our council on uh, on achieving that. So it is a significant achievement, and um, just for the community's um, benefit to let them know what uh, level three, level four is. Um, level four is if we were to achieve carbon neutrality in our reporting year. So that's that's a really good goal. Um, and I think that's a goal that the Food Security Climate Disruption Committee will um, you know, try to set 
set goals on and targets on and, and ways that we can do that. So um, it's, uh, it's very important, obviously. So uh, it's great to see us as a small community, especially um, achieving those. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Washington, do you want to move receipt of these? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the informational correspondence items numbered one through five be received and filed. Second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? <coughs> Carried. And, Council, uh, that brings us then to the report from in camera. Uh, and the report is on the Reconciliation Committee. Uh, I want to uh, introduce the uh, committee members. So earlier this summer, Council extended an invitation to local residents interested in sharing their experience, knowledge and skills to help foster reconciliation between ind Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in Port Alberni. A number of well-qualified and thoughtful applications were received and have now been reviewed by Council. I am pleased to advise that at an in-camera meeting on September 5th, Council for the City of Port Alberni confirmed the appointment of Sheena Faulkner, Ian Benoit, and Wally Samuel to the Reconciliation Committee. Many of you will know Sheena Faulkner. Sheena is currently the Executive Director of Stewardship with West Coast Aquatic. In her role, she has worked and developed relationships with both Sashat and Hupachisit First Nations through education and natural resource management. She also serves and volunteers with many organizations in our community. Ian Benoit is a professional public policy analyst with a specialization in Indigenous governance and Crown relations. He is a resident of our community and has worked directly with many First Nations throughout the province. Wally Samuel is a member of the Ahouset First Nation and has worked for the Port Alberni Friendship Centre for many years, as well as serving as the chair of its board for almost a decade. He also served on many boards in our community over the years. Each of these individuals will bring a unique perspective and skill set to this committee, which has been formed to investigate and report on actions for the city and community to undertake to help strengthen relations, increase cultural awareness and understanding, and support a welcoming and inclusive community. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank all those who submitted their applications for consideration. In the coming weeks, both the Hupetchesit and Sashat First Nations will confirm their appointees to the committee and we would expect the first meeting to occur sometime during October. At this time, I would also like to request that Council consider a resolution appointing Councillor Minions to the committee, and I'll make that resolution now, that Council for the City of Port Alberni appoint Councillor Minions as a member of the Reconciliation Committee. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. You Thank you. you weren't even in the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Minions. Okay, then that brings us to uh, council reports, and the first one is the mayor's report. Um, go through the last, uh, a little bit of the last couple of weeks of th some things that I did. Uh, first item was uh, at a meeting this morning in Victoria uh, to discuss uh, some funding for a very significant infrastructure project and. Uh, more will come out about that as uh, decisions are made at different levels of uh, senior government. Um, September 16th, um, so Saturday, I attended a reception about uh, aboard a, a, a Japanese training ship in North Vancouver at the Burrard Dry Dock Pier. And it was welcoming the crew and Japanese ambassador uh, and various dignitaries. On September 15th, uh, I had the opportunity to drop the puck at the Bulldogs uh, season opener. And thank you to uh, Councillor Sobe and Councillor Paulson. Uh, Councillor Sobe, who was uh, uh, providing backup, and Councillor Paulson, who uh, had his normal uh, location at the top of the stairs there. Um, and as well, um, I met with a local doctor to, to discuss uh, the urgency of a whole series of impending retirements in our community over the next, uh, you know, say up to five years. So that could cause some significant uh, concern in our community. And uh, we were discussing ways of being able to address some of this. Uh, September 14th, I was involved in the official dedica dedication of a sidewalk extension across from ADSS. And it was uh, one that uh, was brought to our attention from, the students, from some students at ADSS. And it was addressing issues of student safety. 
Uh, September the 11th, uh, I met with uh, BC Coastal Pilots uh, representatives, the uh, president, vice president, and uh, one of their board members uh, about training and future needs for BC Coastal Pilots. And there's a huge and growing need, and uh, it's uh, definitely a well-compensated uh, profession if there's anybody out there has such an interest. Um, September 9th, I participated in the uh, Fall Fair Parade. Um, and had the opportunity to welcome uh, our MLA and Minister Scott Fraser, as well as Mayor Leslie Baird from, Cam uh, from Cumberland. And um, it was a great parade, and uh, thank you to all of council that was able, councillors who were able to participate in the parade and help represent our city. Uh, September 7th, I was in Vancouver, uh, specifically uh, Surrey, at a meeting with uh, one of our federal ministers, uh, then some issues related to, again, to um, federal contributions to infrastructure. And September 5th, uh, did a welcome at the uh, Sand Group uh, Colson Mill site uh, to a group of international forest product buyers and investors. So it's uh, been a busy last couple of weeks. <coughs> uh, and Council, that's my report. I move acceptance of my report. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor McClemon from the Regional District. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it was a very short Regional District meeting uh, this time. The only thing we discussed in, in any detail was the airport, and it uh, looks like some of it won't be done until 2019, I guess. Um, not entirely pleased about that, but uh, and, I, and I think we're going to have to look into some ways of speeding some of that up, but we'll have to look at that. But other than that, the... Uh, there wasn't anything startling coming out of the meeting, so I'll move my report. I'll second it. All those in favor? Carried. And from the council, uh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll just touch on one thing, the Heritage Commission, uh, the up few updates there. Uh, discussion on the questionnaire for City Council concerning the heritage and the role of the AV Museum and Heritage Commission. Uh, this comes out of discussions that they held over the summer. They actually met in July and August, which is, I think, a first for that for that commission. And they shall be in attendance uh, in October uh, to do the distribution of the questionnaire and to um, hopefully answer some questions, apparently, like what Jack was looking for, for answers. And the Film Fest is, has started, started September 17th. Uh, next movie is October 19th called Their Finest and November 26th called Tulip Fever. Uh, if you want to contact the museum, you can get your tickets and the shows are 5 p.m. on Sunday. So that's my report, sir. Thank you. And Councillor Alamani? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a short one. Uh, it was at the Fall Fair, of course. Um, but uh, main work last week was uh, the Air Quality Council. Um, we had a very significant meeting. Uh, we don't have a chair at the moment or a coordinator at the moment um, with the departure of Sarah Thomas. So um, the Air Quality Society, which is the actual body that, that uh, puts the Air Quality Council together, is uh, developing a job description um, and a work plan for 2018. So that uh, posting will be out fairly soon. And, uh, and the, the council is looking for... Um, you know, people who, who might be interested in, in uh, being that coordinator. So uh, if anyone has, has some ideas, that would be wonderful. Um, we talked about um, an airshed management planning process, which is something the, the previous coordinator was, was sort of ramping up on. Um, this is, uh, this is it's, a, it's a more holistic approach of, um, you know, looking at the entire airshed, the whole Alberni Valley, uh, what the sources are specifically and uh, and strategies and recommendations for how to address them so um, a number of communities have done these uh, in the past quinell has done it uh cowichan has has done one um, so this is something that uh, i think will be a, a major focus of the, the air quality council in the next year or two um, and then the the last bit uh, is the wood stove exchange program um, we have uh, 44 given to us this year, uh, so uh, 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 vouchers given to us this year. 20 have been exchanged so far, and there are 12 more uh, that are available. So if anybody is looking at upgrading their wood stove appliance, um, you can upgrade to a wood stove, you can upgrade to gas, you can upgrade to a heat pump, 
Um, so there's money available for all of that, um, anywhere from 250 to 450 dollars. So um, if anyone out there is doing that stuff, uh, make sure you get in contact with the regional district uh, to uh, take advantage of those programs. And of course, if you're going to a wood stove um, somewhere that sells wood stoves, they will also have that information. So that's it. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Minions? Nothing to report tonight. Thank you. Okay, and Councillor Paulson? Mr. Mayor, you're a hard act to follow up. But, um, on Saturday or on Sunday, I, um, um, my wife and I uh, went to a couple of the farms for Family Farm Day, and we went to um, the Collins Farm, Arrowvale, Arrowvale Campground, and also to Coleman Meadows Farm, and I obviously couldn't come away from there without a tub of gelato, chocolate, I might add. Uh, of course, the Bulldogs had their home openers on the weekend, um, won one and lost one, but um, pretty exciting group of young fellows, and I know um, they introduced themselves to the mayor and the mayor of Cumberland, and I think that both mayors were quite impressed with the diversity of, of hometowns from, from um, eastern Canada through the U.S. Um, I want to commend the... Uh, the organizers of the toy run again this year. Um, 1,244 bikes is, I think, the official count, and um, pretty impressive show. They went by my house on Argyle Street there probably for about 25 minutes, and um, it's um, congratulations to them for, for another successful weekend. And that's my report. Thank you, Councillor Paulson. And Councillor Sobey? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also want to extend an appreciation to the uh, Tory Run Association and uh, especially for all the volunteers that put this together. It benefits our youth and our community and, and children and all that. So I just wanted to extend a big thank you to the organizers and the uh, volunteers that made this a very successful uh, Tory Run. Um, also attended the... Uh, Port Alberni Fall Fair Parade. Uh, I had the privilege to be with Joe, Joe Lee from the Bulldogs and to judging floats. So uh, congratulations to the organizers. It was a big success. And uh, thank you for the volunteers that also made that uh, uh, event uh, very special to the community. Uh, September 15th, uh, the uh, Isabel McKenzie, who's the Seniors Advocate in British Columbia, released her report about uh, surveys on residential facilities um, and what is needed with our uh, seniors. Uh, I've been working uh, with uh, Mrs. McKenzie and we're going to be meeting also at the upcoming UBCM to discuss uh, many issues uh, involving our seniors, including social isolation and having the in-home care. So I'll be working also attending with Better at Home um, into uh, working on a workshop to involve all uh, senior citizen uh, services that are available in our community into one point and work together in getting better funding in helping our seniors who are still at home. Um, also attended the game opener for the Bulldogs uh, uh, versus Victoria. Uh, did some red search duties there with the mayor and uh, pardon me? It still fits. It still fits? Yes, it does still fit. Thank God. You just nobody had to stay near me, but thank God it still fit. Um, just a big mention, uh, the tw uh, Twinning Society uh, made a presentation tonight. I just wanted to mention to the public the importance of uh, sharing culture with our Twinning Society and the advantages and the, uh, uh, you know, the fact that it's such a organization run, run by tireless uh, uh, volunteers who makes not only our country but our city uh, as uh, more inviting than any other city in, in this country. So uh, Abishiri has been a longtime friend and I'm looking forward to continue another year with them. Uh, the biggest thing is, is it's a small board and a lot of volunteers are needed and these are volunteer families or parents are willing to take exchange students or exchange adults but also a uh, volunteer just to bring in your input and share, share the culture between these two cities. It's, uh, you'd be amazing how gratifying it is. So um, that's about it for my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you. And Councillor McClellan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too was in the parade. I actually uh, walked the whole way with the big weighty things of juice to hand out. Went with the uh, Labor Council group. There wasn't as many there us as usual, so I thought there, there's a place for Jack to go on the parade. And it was a lot of fun. Enjoyed it. Um, went on. I appreciate the work done by the farms, uh, the urban and the uh, rural farms. I appreciated uh, Shane Morrill's what he did in the back alley and in the front alley and things like that with his uh, his groin. And it's a lot of work putting on these events for us. The fall fair, toy run, uh, 1,200 was nowhere near how many there actually was in there because a lot of people didn't get a chance to sign up. They were backed up down at, uh, at the um, uh, falls down there. At, oh, little and, Qualicum. The little Qualicum Falls. And I get, I get tungle tied here. And they, they were right out to the highway and didn't have time to sign up. These had to go around and go. So the guesses were a few hundred extra from the people that were down there shooting cannons and whatnot. And uh, I think all those things uh, combined with what else goes in town, we got the drags that we put on on Stamp Avenue. And uh, it sure would be good if they could find a place that was uh, permanent for as much as it's fun to watch them on the streets. I think they could have more than one a year and bring more people into town. So I think that's something that we can be working on if they, if they want to. So. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, I, I think that's total of my report, so I will move acceptance of all these wonderful reports. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, I don't put Councillor Alleman. Just a short item for new business, um, sort of related to the Air Quality Council work. Um, I uh, sent an email to the, to the city clerk um, wondering if I could send an email to UBCM delegates. I know we've been getting some emails from UBCM, um, sort of about UBCM issues from various cities and whatnot. Um, I would like to send out an email on behalf of the city just encouraging um, those other delegates to um, support our, our open burning regulations um, resolution from a few years ago, um, now that there's a new government and new ministers and all that. so. Uh, I would like to be able to send a send a, an email um, that would just ask for their support and for them to mention the new regulations that uh, that are on the books at the Ministry of Environment but haven't been implemented. Um, so hopefully, if we get a few more people that are just mentioning it, um, there'll be uh, some more support for that, and that'll actually happen. So if I could ask for some support from Council to do that, um, I guess I need a resolution for that. So if I could make a motion for that, that would be great. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion, Council? No, well, Mr. Mayor, I don't know what this resolution is. The resolution is just to and send an email out to the other delegates. The resolution is an email to support something. What we're supporting is what I'm questioning. The resolution that we all supported in the 2016 UBCM on controlling open burning. I'm not Air sure I support yeah. the resolution as it is, Mr. Mayor, but. Uh, so I, I won't be supporting sending a letter asking other people to until I understand it. Okay. That's fine. Um, did you, you included that in resolution or we've seen that, that copy of that resolution recently, Certainly. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Then on the motion, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So I'll work with staff to uh, craft the email and send that out maybe right maybe circulate the resolution as well yeah, yeah. okay uh, question period it's an opportunity for public and press to ask questions of the mayor and council and no questions then a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion mr mayor second, second mr. Mayor. all those in favor pre-voting thank you everybody